Hello and welcome to another Spotlight interview. Today I'm joined by Ben Haynes, who is the co-founder and CEO of Directus. Hey Ben, it's great to have you on our Spotlight interview. Thank you, David. Good to be here. Absolutely. So I've been learning a lot about Directus, the open data platform. Uh, really fascinating what you all are doing there at Directus. And I wanted to start off just by asking you, you know, why did you all decide to create a Directus and what's the problem that this solves? Yeah, that's a great question. It actually goes back all the way to 2004. Uh, we were a digital agency building a number of projects, uh, very disparate projects from you know, digital experiences to interactive, you know, installations and everything in between. We were starting our projects with the database uh, and then building out everything bespoke after that, uh, which is very time consuming. We couldn't use traditional CMS uh, for the websites. We couldn't use other platforms for the other types of projects. Uh, but the one commonality was always the database. Uh, we internally, our engineers were using the database administration tools uh, you know, MySQL Pro, or sorry, uh, PHP MyAdmin, SQL Pro, uh, MySQL Workbench, and the like. Those are great for engineers. However, they are not ideal for a non-technical person. So we couldn't hand it off to the end customer. What we aimed to do was uh, build a platform that would allow the management, the uh, connectivity, and the visualization of the data, whatever that might be in any SQL database, just like a database administration tool, uh, that is essentially what we did with Directus is we built uh, a platform that can layer on uh, the SQL database and provide a full featured data toolkit for engineers as well as business users. It's really fascinating, really innovative what you all have done. I've been learning a lot about it. And I'm curious for folks out there who you know, adopt Directus, what are they using today? What are they replacing uh, this with? So we started out as a headless CMS. Uh, so we were competing with monolithic CMS like WordPress and Drupal, uh, as well as more modern vendors, uh, you know, contentful and the like. Uh, I think that we've moved away from that positioning and more recently, we are an open data platform. Uh, so content is really just another type of data. We're not trying to paint ourselves into a corner uh, for managing websites. That's a very crowded space. Our platform is really used for managing anything in that SQL database. Uh, and so a lot of our customers are replacing either legacy or even modern CMS. Uh, but also things like Hasura and Supabase, you know, backend as a service, database as a service, uh, a database layer with an API, essentially. Uh, there's also visualization tools such as Retool, uh, other platforms that allow non-technical users to go in, build out some sort of, whether it's Airtable or, you know, a charting experience, et cetera. Uh, and then, of course, there's edge cases. Uh, we actually were using Datadog, uh, and we shifted that spend into our own platform. Uh, so we can actually look at our server analytics and pull that data in. Uh, certainly the furthest thing from content management, uh, but that hopefully gives a good spectrum of, of what we're, you know, going from the content all the way down to the raw business data. It's amazing. I mean, there's just so many use cases for this, really an unlimited uh, list of use cases. So I'm curious, why did you decide to open source this? And what's been the benefit of doing that? So it's... If beyond the sort of uh, the, just the nice mentality of kind of giving things away for free, uh, it's really, really powerful to have that many eyeballs. Uh, we actually just last week passed 18 million Docker downloads. You can't get that breadth of a user base if you have a proprietary closed source system. The transparency, the testing that we get, uh, the bug reports, you know, all of that just makes things very, very efficient, uh, helps us move really, really quickly. So the momentum we've the momentum that we've built uh, is really because our team is a, a small subset of the staff you know that powers our platform. We have hundreds of contributors. We've got millions of users, uh, and all of that makes a more robust ecosystem. That's amazing. So it, let's dive a little bit deeper into some of the use cases. Can you talk to us a little bit about uh, maybe some examples of companies that have used Directus and and what have they done with it? Sure. Uh, so one example would be Native Instruments. Uh, they're a music hardware and software company. Uh, they're using it for that, that very common content management uh, you know, use case. Uh, they're powering their digital experiences, their websites, things like that. Uh, but then we can go a, a step further and we can take someone like Bose. Uh, that it, they are using it for acoustic data uh, within an IoT fleet. So within these devices, they're capturing data, they're managing and visualizing that data. Uh, you know, not content. This is, you know, 
pretty raw data from those IoT devices. Uh, and then a third sort of example would be AT&T. They have uh, a 30 or 40 foot digital display wall uh, power. It you know, could be considered digital signage, could be considered installation or an exhibit. That content or that data uh, is being powered or, or funneled through our platform and then delivered. So again, the furthest thing from a website, uh, it's really important to make sure that we remain agnostic and unopinionated in terms of what we're managing so that it can go out to any device or just be used within Directus itself. Very impressive. And so where do you see this going in the future? So we have uh, a lot going on on the data front. We have everything from real-time data with WebSockets uh, and data flows, which is a very uh, advanced automation uh, workflows system uh, to kind of put it very broadly. That's sort of imminent. That's in the next few weeks and months. Uh, after that, I think the biggest hurdle that we have is moving from this single data store, wrapping any SQL database and moving into multiple data stores. So you can imagine uh, managing multiple SQL databases, bringing in NoSQL, file-based uh, data stores, et cetera. I think that's sort of the holy grail because then you can really become a virtualization of all of your business data across however you choose to store it. Yeah, I love that idea, that virtualization, that abstraction of all the business data. Um, so I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of folks out there who are wondering, kind of, you know, what's the pricing model around this? So being free and open source, uh, the, the sort of baseline there is certainly free. Uh, you can, there's no feature limitations, there's no paywall. You can go on GitHub, you can download the code, you can look at the entire code base, uh, install it, et cetera. And we make that as easy as possible, you know, through Docker, NPM, uh, you know, cloning the GitHub repo. We also have a free cloud offering. Uh, and so if you still want to maintain that free, we're bringing the open source spirit to cloud uh, by offering, a, again, unlimited, no paywalls, uh, cloud tier. Beyond that, if you need a little bit more power for production uh, projects, you can actually use our standard tier uh, or go all the way up to enterprise tier where you're going to get uh, support, you're going to get an SLA and the like. I love that. Oh, free download on GitHub, uh, even free in the cloud. Uh, and then you've got the advanced features available in, in the different tiers. And so how do people get started with this? What's the easiest route? The easiest way is just to head over to the website, directus.io. From there, you can look at the platform, the offering, the features, uh, as well as our pricing page, which outlines everything from the open source and free, uh, free cloud tier all the way through standard and enterprise. Very cool. I just tried it out myself. I spun up a, a new project in the cloud on Directus Cloud, just took a couple of minutes, super easy to do. I encourage everyone to check it out and try it for yourself. Uh, ben, it's been really great having you on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. For more, for more Spotlight interviews, check out uh, our website over on uh, YouTube. And of course, check out uh, our upcoming events over at our events.actualtechmedia.com site as well. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day.